My name is Michael. If you were to step into my apartment on any given day, you'd find a quiet sanctuary, a place where books line the shelves, each one a world unto itself, inviting anyone who dares to dream. The walls, adorned with photographs, are a silent testament to a life rich in family bonds and friendships. Yet, among these images of smiling faces and captured moments, you might notice something, or rather, the absence of something. There are no pictures with romantic partners, no captured moments of love shared with a significant other. Living in the heart of a bustling city, you'd think one wouldn't feel loneliness, but it's there, lingering in the quiet moments before sleep when the world slows down enough for me to hear my own thoughts. By day, I am like any other. I go to work, share laughs with colleagues, and manage the small victories and losses that come with life. But by night, my home is my retreat, where I play melancholy tunes on my guitar, the notes echoing off the walls of my solitary existence. I've often wondered about this gap in my life, this void that seems so stark against the backdrop of my otherwise content existence. I'm introspective by nature, always lost in thoughts, parsing through emotions and words left unsaid. My friends say I'm too sensitive, too wrapped up in the world of fiction I so often escape to. They might be right, in books, the heroes always find a way, love always wins, and the ending ties up beautifully in a way real life seldom manages. My struggles with finding romantic love aren't for lack of trying. I've been on dates, met interesting people, but something always seems amiss. It's as if I'm a character in a book who skipped a crucial chapter that explains how to connect on a level deeper than friendship. Sometimes, I feel as though I'm on the outside looking in, watching others navigate their lives with partners, wondering how they weave their lives so seamlessly with someone else's. Yet here I am, in my quiet apartment, surrounded by my books and memories, contemplating the irony of a man who can delve into the deepest emotions of fictional characters, but can't seem to untangle the simplicity of his own heart's desires. Tonight, like many others, I'll lose myself in another story, living vicariously through characters who dare to love in ways I'm still learning to understand. As the evenings grew longer and the silence in my apartment became louder, my loneliness urged me to seek answers in the digital world. A world where advice was just a click away. That's how I stumbled upon them, the self-proclaimed gurus of modern masculinity. Their videos filled my screen, each one promising the secret to confidence, to allure, to the magnetic pull that seemed to elude me. These men spoke with an authority that was hypnotic. Being nice is your downfall, one would proclaim, his voice echoing through the hollows of my solitary room. It's all a game and I'll teach you to win, another would laugh, his smirk a challenge to my inherent gentleness. Their words, dripping with arrogance and brimming with toxic certainty, began to seep into me distorting the mirror through which I viewed myself and my approach to relationships. Driven by a mixture of desperation and intrigue, I started to mold my online persona into what they prescribed. My dating profiles, once filled with honest reflections of my interests, literary quotes, mentions of quiet evenings with a book, or strolls through the art museum, transformed into displays of a more brash and assertive Michael. I swapped my profile picture from one of me smiling gently at a cafe with a book in hand to one leaning against a bar, a smirk playing on my lips, a glass of whiskey poised as if a prop to suggest a more rugged side. I scripted my bio anew, infusing it with undertones of dominance and mystery, erasing any hint of the sensitivity that was the core of my being. Adventurous, assertive, and uncompromising, it read now, a stark contrast to the thoughtful, introspective, and passionate about literature that had once stood in its place. As I crafted this persona, each click of the mouse felt like a betrayal, not just of who I was, but of the person I wanted to be. Yet the loneliness that gnawed at me each night was a powerful motivator, whispering that perhaps this was just what I needed to do. This is how the game is played, I told myself trying to silence the discomfort that tugged at the edges of my consciousness. When the likes and messages began to roll in, a part of me felt victorious. Here was the validation that these gurus promised, the allure and attention that had been missing from my life. 
But another part, a quieter, truer part, recoiled each time I responded in the cocky, dismissive tone they advised. Each conversation I had felt like a chess game, where I was always on edge, strategizing and manipulating, far removed from the genuine connections I truly craved. The hollow victories of shallow admiration haunted me in the quiet hours of the night, leaving me to wonder if the reflection in the mirror, now playing a part so foreign, was really the person I wanted to become. As my new persona began to attract attention on the dating platforms, I matched with Jessica. Her profile was a mosaic of vibrant interests, photographs of mountain hikes, poetry readings, and soft, genuine smiles that reached her eyes. Her bio read like a breath of fresh air in a world trying too hard to impress. Seeker of authentic connections, lover of lazy Sunday mornings and spirited debates under the stars. I hesitated at first, caught between the allure of her authenticity and the facade I had carefully constructed. The guru's advice echoed in my head, keep it aloof, keep it dominant. With a deep breath, I swiped right, and to my surprise, we matched. Our conversation began, and from the outset, it was clear Jessica was different. Her first message was a playful yet insightful comment on one of my photos, the one with the whiskey and the forced smirk. Is that your favorite whiskey or just a prop to look mysterious? She teased gently. I found myself at a crossroads. Continue with the persona or drop the act. The guru's voices won out. It's all about keeping them intrigued, I typed back, injecting a cockiness into my words that I didn't feel. Maybe it's a bit of both. A man has to keep some mystery, right? Jessica's response came quickly, laced with humor and a hint of challenge. Mystery is intriguing, but sincerity wins the day. Tell me, what's something real about you, Michael? The question caught me off guard. The real Michael wanted to tell her about my love for quiet mornings spent with a book or how I found solace in writing short stories that seldom saw the light of day. But the Michael I was pretending to be responded with a vague, life's too short to be anything but bold and decisive. I take what I want from life, and right now I want to know you. Her reply was not immediate, and in that pause my anxiety grew. When her message finally popped up, it was thoughtful. Boldness is admirable, but I find depth and kindness equally compelling, Tell me, Michael, beneath all this boldness, what really moves you? I was torn. Part of me wanted to dive into a real conversation, to explore the depth she was gently inviting me to reveal. But fear, and the toxic advice I'd been feeding on, nudged me to maintain the front. What moves me? I parroted with a calculated casualness. Success, winning, proving I'm the best at what I do. As I sent that message, a pang of sadness washed over me. I was veering further from who I really was and for what. Jessica's next message was slow to come, and when it did, it was laced with a gentle disappointment that was worse than any outright rejection could have been. Winning is rewarding, I'm sure, she wrote. But isn't there more to life than just winning? Anyway, it was nice chatting, Michael. Maybe when you're ready to talk about the man behind the mask, we could try this again. I stared at the screen, her words sinking in. She had seen through the facade. She was looking for something real, something genuine, and I had failed to offer that. The realization was a bitter pill. I had lost a chance at a real connection in pursuit of a hollow victory. Her words echoed in my mind, a reminder of what I truly sought but had been too afraid to embrace. Authenticity, depth, real connection. These were the things that mattered, the things that Jessica, in her gentle probing, had tried to uncover. That night, as I lay in bed, the silence of the apartment heavier than usual, I realized the cost of wearing a mask. I wondered if it was too late to start again, to reach out and show her, or anyone, the real Michael. The thought was both terrifying and liberating. The next few days were a blur of introspection and regret. Jessica's words haunted me echoing in the quiet moments and in the restless solitude of my nights. Her invitation for authenticity gnawed at me, an unwelcome reminder of the dissonance between who I was and the persona I had adopted. Then, unexpectedly, a new message from Jessica appeared on my phone. It was brief, almost casual, but beneath the words, I sensed an olive branch being extended. Hey, Michael, 
There's a little art exhibition this Friday evening, not far from where you live. I think it could be interesting. No masks, just a chance to meet, truly. What do you say? Her offer was both terrifying and exhilarating. Meeting Jessica in person meant no screens to hide behind, no time to craft the perfect dominant reply. It meant being seen, perhaps more clearly than I had allowed anyone in a long time. My first instinct was to decline, to retreat into the familiar safety of my solitude. But her words, no masks, resonated with a part of me that yearned to shed the facade. With a shaky resolve, I typed back, I'd like that. Friday works for me. Sending that message felt like stepping off a cliff, exhilarating and terrifying in equal measure. The days leading up to Friday were fraught with anxiety. I oscillated between excitement at the thought of meeting Jessica and dread over dropping the toxic front. What if she was disappointed by the real me? What if the Michael who loved quiet mornings and heartfelt novels wasn't enough? Finally, Friday arrived. As the evening drew near, I stood before my wardrobe, my reflection in the mirror a stark reminder of the internal conflict raging within. Choosing what to wear felt symbolic, like choosing which Michael would show up. After much deliberation, I settled on a simple, understated outfit that felt more me than any of the persona-driven choices I'd previously made. Driving to the gallery, my hands were unsteady on the wheel. Each stoplight was a pause, a moment to reconsider my choices. But with every green light, I felt a growing resolve. It was time to be honest, not just with Jessica, but with myself. The gallery was small, tucked away on a quiet street, its walls alive with vibrant art that spilled color into the evening. I arrived early, my heart racing as I waited outside, watching as the sky melted into twilight. Then I saw her. Jessica approached with a smile that was both confident and kind, her eyes searching mine for a sign of recognition. As she neared, my heart felt like it might beat right out of my chest. Michael, she greeted, her voice warm and real. I'm so glad you came. Her presence, so genuine and grounded, made me feel both exposed and comforted. We walked into the gallery together, and as we moved from piece to piece, our conversation began to unfold as naturally as the evening light. She talked about art with passionate knowledge, and her enthusiasm was infectious. Encouraged by her openness, I began to share my own thoughts, not the rehearsed lines of a persona, but the genuine reactions of a shared experience. As the evening wore on, the gap between the Michael I pretended to be and the Michael I truly was began to narrow. With each shared laugh and exchanged insight, I felt the walls I had built around myself start to crumble. Standing there, amidst the art that challenged perceptions and provoked thought, Jessica turned to me, a soft seriousness in her eyes. You know, Michael, she said gently. It's nice to see you without the mask. I think I like this version of you better. Her words were simple, but they struck deep. In that moment, I felt a profound sense of relief, as if I had been holding my breath and could finally exhale. No victory, no game had ever felt as gratifying as her acknowledgement of my true self. As the evening came to a close and we stepped out into the cool night air, I knew something fundamental had changed. I wasn't sure where this path would lead, but for the first time in a long time, I was ready to find out, unmasked and open-hearted. After the art exhibition, the newfound openness between Jessica and me had bridged much of the distance I had once felt. As we walked together under the soft glow of the street lamps, she turned to me with a mischievous twinkle in her eye. How about we continue this evening with some drinks and music at my place? I have a couple of friends who'd love to meet the Michael I've been telling them about. The suggestion caught me off guard. The idea of meeting her friends suddenly reignited my anxieties about the personas I had juggled. But there was no going back to hiding behind a mask, not after the evening we had shared. With a nod, albeit a hesitant one, I agreed. Arriving at Jessica's apartment felt like stepping into another chapter of the night. The space was warm and inviting, with eclectic decorations that spoke of her vibrant personality. Soft music played in the background, setting a relaxed tone. However, the moment her friends came into view, a hint of the old apprehension surged through me. 
They greeted us with bright smiles and curious eyes that seemed to pierce right through me. Jessica introduced them with affectionate ease. This is Claire and this is Nora, she said, her hand gesturing to each in turn. Claire was an artist, her demeanor as expressive as the artwork we had admired earlier. Nora was a writer, her insightful gaze suggesting she read people just as well as she did books. As we all settled into the cozy living room, the atmosphere was undeniably charged. The conversation started lightly, revolving around the art exhibition we had just attended. However, it wasn't long before the discussion subtly shifted towards more personal terrain. Claire, with a playful yet probing tone, asked, So, Michael, Jessica tells us you're quite the mysterious character. What's one mystery you'd like to unravel tonight? The question was light-hearted, but its implications were not lost on me. I could feel their keen interest, not just in my words, but in the authenticity behind them. It was clear Jessica had shared more than just my name. She had hinted at the journey I was on, shedding my constructed identity. Choosing my words with care, I replied, I think the greatest mystery I'm learning to unravel is myself, how to be genuine in a world that often rewards the opposite. Jessica's eyes met mine, her look one of quiet support. Nora nodded thoughtfully, her expression softening. That's a tough journey, but a worthwhile one. We all wear masks at some point, don't we? The conversation deepened, each question and answer weaving a tapestry of genuine human connection. There were moments when I felt the old instinct to retreat, to shield my vulnerabilities behind a facade of indifference. But the environment Jessica had created, surrounded by her insightful and open-hearted friends, encouraged a different choice. As the night progressed, the initial tension I had felt began to dissolve. Claire and Nora shared stories of their own facades and the moments that led them to embrace authenticity. Their stories were not just words, they were invitations to a shared human experience, to a space where vulnerability was not a liability, but a bridge to deeper connection. By the end of the evening, the playful yet charged atmosphere had transformed into one of warmth and laughter. I realized that what had begun as a night filled with apprehension had evolved into one of the most honest and connecting experiences of my life. In revealing my true self, not only to Jessica, but to her friends as well, I had not found judgment or disappointment, but acceptance and a deeper sense of belonging. As I left Jessica's apartment that night, the cool air felt refreshing, invigorating. It was as though I was stepping out not just into the night, but also into a new phase of my life, one where the masks could be left behind and genuine connections could flourish. A few weeks after our engaging evening with her friends, Jessica invited me to a themed party she was hosting, intriguingly titled, A Walk in Another's Shoes. The concept, she explained, was for each guest to step out of their comfort zones and into someone else's world for the evening. It was intended to be a fun, enlightening experience, challenging our perceptions and embracing empathy. When I arrived, the apartment was buzzing with laughter and lively chatter. Guests had embraced the theme with enthusiasm, adorned in outfits that were far from their everyday selves. I spotted a man dressed in vintage women's fashion, complete with a flapper dress and pearls, while a woman wore a businessman's suit, her demeanor exuding corporate charm. The air was filled with a mix of excitement and a hint of nervous anticipation, a cocktail of emotions I found myself sharing. As I mingled, Feeling slightly underdressed in my simple, swapped, gender-neutral attire, Jessica pulled me aside, her eyes sparkling with mischief and excitement. Michael, I have a special challenge for you tonight, she whispered, leading me to a secluded corner of her room where a carefully selected outfit lay draped over a chair. It was a woman's ensemble, elegant yet unmistakably feminine, a tasteful dress paired with accessories and, notably, high heels. I thought it would be interesting for you to spend the evening as Michelle, she said, her tone both playful and sincere. It's all in good spirit, but I also think it could be a profound experience for you to see the world even just for a night from a different perspective. The proposition was startling, to say the least. My heart raced at the thought, a mix of fear and intrigue swirling within me. The challenge struck a chord, 
touching on the vulnerabilities I had been exploring recently. To literally step into a woman's shoes felt like a daunting leap from the metaphorical journeys I had undertaken. Taking a deep breath, I looked at Jessica, seeing not just the challenge in her eyes, but also an encouraging warmth. Okay, Jessica, I'll do it. Let's introduce Michelle to the world, I replied, my voice steadier than I felt. With Jessica's help, I changed into the outfit. The fabric of the dress felt alien against my skin, smooth and clinging in ways my usual attire never did. Slipping into the high heels was an exercise in balance and patience, each step a tentative negotiation with gravity. Jessica assisted me with makeup, her hands gentle as she applied foundation, a hint of blush, and even mascara, transforming my reflection into someone familiar yet entirely new. As I faced myself in the mirror, the image of Michelle stared back, a striking representation of another side of life I had never personally embodied. The experience was disorienting yet enlightening, offering me a visceral insight into the small yet significant trials faced by those who presented themselves in this way every day. Stepping back into the party as Michelle, the initial reactions of surprise and delight from the other guests were heartening, but they also underscored the reality of being seen in a radically different light. The evening unfolded with conversations that skirted the surface, but occasionally delved deeper, touching on themes of identity, expression, and the freedom, or lack thereof, to be oneself in society. Each interaction was tinged with the heightened awareness of myself and how I was perceived. Walking in heels, maintaining poise in a dress, and responding to the name Michelle provided continuous reminders of the challenge. The physical aspects were daunting, but it was the emotional landscape that proved most transformative. I felt exposed yet strangely liberated, part of a shared human experience that was broader and more intricate than my usual day-to-day -day life. Jessica stayed close, her presence a comforting anchor in the sea of new sensations. As the night drew to a close, she leaned in, her voice soft. How do you feel, Michelle? She asked, genuine curiosity in her voice. It's been eye-opening, I admitted, the words barely capturing the cascade of thoughts and emotions. Challenging, uncomfortable, but oddly empowering, too. Jessica smiled, a look of respect and understanding passing between us. Sometimes, stepping into someone else's shoes, even just for a night, can change the way we see everything, she reflected, her words resonating deeply. As Michelle, I had not only ventured into a new physical guise, but it also traversed a landscape of empathy and insight that would shape my understanding of myself and others in profound and enduring ways. The room where my transformation into Michelle took place felt almost sacred, a space where boundaries were about to be crossed and new insights gained. Jessica and her two close friends, Claire and Nora, were there, each playing a role in this profound metamorphosis. Their presence added a layer of support and seriousness to the atmosphere, blending with the playful undertones of the evening's theme. As I stood there, still clad in my usual attire, Jessica presented each item of the outfit they had chosen for me. The dress was elegant, a soft, flowing material that shimmered slightly under the light. It was paired with a tasteful set of accessories, delicate earrings and a matching bracelet. The high heels, sleek and daunting, sat next to a wig that promised to transform my appearance completely. My initial reluctance was palpable. Each item felt like a challenge, a test of my openness and willingness to embrace a perspective so different from my own. Seeing my hesitation, Jessica approached with a reassuring smile. It's okay to be nervous, Michael, she said gently. This is all about exploration and understanding. Remember, it's just for one night and we're all here with you. Encouraged by her words, I began to change into the outfit, with Nora offering practical help with the dress. The fabric felt foreign against my skin, and as the dress slipped over my head and settled around my body, I felt an immediate shift in my self-perception. The way the material hugged my frame, the length of the skirt, the open neckline, all of these elements combined to create a sensation that was entirely new to me. Next, Claire helped me step into the high heels, Balancing in them was a challenge, and I found myself leaning on her more than once for support. Each tentative step was a lesson in balance and posture, skills that women like Jessica, Claire, and Nora 
had likely learned over many years. With the dress and shoes in place, Jessica began the makeup application. Her touch was gentle, almost reverential, as she applied foundation, a hint of blush, and eye makeup that accentuated features of my face I had never focused on before. The transformation was not just physical, but emotional, as I saw a version of myself appearing in the mirror that bridged the gap between genders, highlighting a shared humanity. Finally, Nora fitted the wig onto my head, adjusting it until the soft locks framed my face naturally. The person staring back at me from the mirror was both a stranger and intimately familiar. Michelle looked back with my eyes, but her expression bore a vulnerability and softness that Michael rarely showed the world. Throughout the process, the women shared their own experiences and tips with light-hearted banter, making me feel part of a ritual that was both everyday and profound. They discussed the nuances of feminine presentation not just as a matter of appearance, but as an experience laden with societal expectations and personal identity. As the transformation concluded, I stood before them, no longer Michael, but not quite Michelle either. The amalgamation of the two was a revelation. How do you feel? Jessica asked, her voice full of genuine curiosity. It's overwhelming, I admitted, my voice a mix of awe and confusion. I feel exposed, but also strangely empowered. It's as if I'm stepping into a world that's been right beside me, yet I've never truly seen it. Their smiles were warm and encouraging. That's perfectly normal, Claire said. What you're doing tonight is brave and beautiful. It's about seeing and being seen in ways you haven't before. As we left the room to join the others, I felt a mix of excitement and trepidation. This evening was no longer just a party. It was a journey into understanding, a brief sojourn into another way of being that promised to expand my horizons and challenge my perceptions. Michelle was ready to meet the world, and I was ready to learn from her experiences. As Michelle stepping back into the lively atmosphere of the party was like entering a different universe. The eyes that turned towards me did so with varying expressions, curiosity, admiration, and some confusion. Each gaze felt like a thread pulling at the fabric of my usual identity, exposing both vulnerabilities and hidden strengths I hadn't fully appreciated before. Navigating the room in high heels was my first tangible encounter with a new way of moving through the world. Each step was precarious, a delicate balancing act that demanded my full attention. The physical aspect of simply moving around added a layer of complexity to my interactions that I had never experienced as Michael. I found myself empathizing more deeply with the challenges and nuances of feminine presentation and the grace required to manage them. Conversation flowed around me, and I engaged more actively, my voice softer, my manner more tentative than usual. This subtle shift in dynamics highlighted how much space I was accustomed to taking as Michael, and how different the responses were when I altered my approach. As Michelle, I felt I needed to listen more, to wait and find my moment to speak, which was both enlightening and frustrating. Throughout the evening, Jessica stayed by my side, her presence a comforting constant as I navigated this new terrain. Her friends, too, were incredibly supportive, providing quiet encouragement or a knowing glance that helped ground me when I felt adrift. Their acceptance and understanding were crucial in helping me embrace the role of Michelle without feeling entirely lost within it. As conversations deepened, I found that my responses also deepened. No longer did I feel compelled to dominate the discussion or steer it towards superficial topics that would showcase my supposed masculinity. Instead, I engaged in more meaningful exchanges about art, life, and identity. This new mode of interaction was liberating. It felt like breathing fresh air after being confined indoors for too long. This experience also cast a stark light on the toxic traits I had begun to adopt under the guise of those online gurus. The emphasis on dominance and manipulation seemed not only unnecessary, but harmful when contrasted with the genuine connections forming around me. I realized the strength it takes not to conform to such expectations, but to live authentically, embracing one's true self, regardless of societal pressures. The vulnerability of being Michelle taught me about resilience in a way I had never considered, each interaction, each moment of self-doubt, was met with an inner strength that I had to muster, 
not just to perform, but to genuinely participate in the evening. It was exhausting and challenging, yet incredibly empowering. By the end of the night, as I removed the makeup, the dress, and the heels, I felt a profound shift within me. The superficial layers of identity that I had clung to as Michael felt less defining than they had before. The experience of being Michelle, albeit brief and performed, had expanded my understanding of myself and of others. I realized that authenticity involves a spectrum of expressions and that courage is found in living truthfully within that spectrum. The toxic masculinity I had once seen as necessary for attraction was replaced by an appreciation for the diversity and depth of human connections that authenticity could foster. In the quiet of the aftermath, as I reflected on the evening, I felt a renewed commitment to explore who Michael could be, free from the harmful stereotypes I had unwittingly embraced. This night, this walk in another's shoes, had not only given me a new perspective, but had also begun to heal parts of me I hadn't even known were wounded. As the evening unfolded, the role of Michelle brought with it a series of internal conflicts and external challenges that were both unsettling and enlightening. Each interaction was a tightrope walk between my newly adopted persona and the ingrained habits of Michael. The playful banter, which on the surface seemed light and easy, often veered into territories that required me to confront aspects of my identity I had rarely questioned before. One particular moment stood out when Nora, with a teasing but sharp wit, pointed out the ease with which I, as Michelle, blended into the discussions about gender roles. It's interesting, she mused aloud, how quickly Michael can adapt to Michelle. Makes you wonder about the roles we're all playing, doesn't it? Her observation, though delivered with a smile, struck a chord. It highlighted the fluidity of identity and how societal expectations could confine us into rigid, often uncomfortable molds. As Michelle, every compliment on my appearance, while flattering, also carried a weight. I felt an expectation to express gratitude, to be demure, which was a stark departure from how I typically accepted praise as Michael. This shift in dynamics was jarring and led to a deeper appreciation of the subtle pressures women often face in social settings, pressures I had previously been oblivious to. Jessica, observing my struggle to navigate these social nuances, often gave me a reassuring nod or squeezed my hand gently under the table. These small gestures of support were lifelines that helped me stay afloat in the unfamiliar waters. During a quiet moment on the balcony, she leaned close and whispered, You're doing great, Michelle. But remember, it's not just about wearing the dress and the heels. It's about understanding what it feels like to walk the path others do. Her words were a gentle reminder of the broader implications of my experience. They prompted me to reflect on the respect that true understanding requires, not just the superficial acceptance of different identities, but an empathetic engagement with the experiences those identities entail. Later, as we all gathered for a group discussion led by Claire, the conversation turned to the topic of societal expectations and their impact on both men and women. Claire posed a question to the group. How do these expectations shape our choices, from the clothes we wear to the careers we pursue? The responses were varied, but shared a common theme of constraint and sometimes rebellion against these imposed norms. Participating as Michelle, I contributed my newfound insights, discussing how the evening had exposed me to the constraints imposed by these expectations. Wearing this outfit, playing this role, I said, has shown me just a fraction of what many go through every day. It's more than the physical attire. It's the weight of constantly being measured against a standard that feels both arbitrary and rigid. The discussion was a mosaic of personal anecdotes and philosophical reflections, which illuminated the diverse ways in which societal norms affected everyone, irrespective of gender. It was enlightening to see the discussion unfold, with each person bringing their unique perspective, shaped by their experiences and challenges. This collective exploration of identity and societal expectations not only deepened my understanding, but also highlighted the areas where I had unconsciously accepted harmful norms. 
It was a powerful realization that my journey towards authenticity wasn't just about shedding a toxic persona, but also about embracing a more inclusive and empathetic view towards all identities. As the night drew to a close, and I finally stepped out of Michelle's shoes, I felt a profound shift within me. The conflicts and challenges of the evening had been rigorous teachers, and though I was eager to return to my own clothes, I was equally reluctant to let go of the invaluable lessons they had imparted. My journey as Michelle, brief as it had been, left a lasting imprint on my heart and mind, one that would influence my thoughts and actions long after the makeup had been washed away. As the night wound down and the last guests began to trickle out of Jessica's apartment, the transformation from Michelle back to Michael was not just physical, but profoundly emotional. Each piece of clothing that I removed felt like shedding layers of misconceptions and barriers that I had built around myself. Sitting quietly in Jessica's living room, now empty and still, the echoes of laughter and conversation lingered in the air, a reminder of the night's revelations and transformations. The experience as Michelle had opened a window into a world I had only ever observed from the outside. It brought with it a surge of emotions, vulnerability, empathy, and a newfound understanding of the complexities of identity and expression. It was as if I had been viewing the world in monochrome, and suddenly, everything was in vivid color. This wasn't just about wearing a dress or walking in heels. It was about experiencing life from a perspective wholly different from my own, and recognizing the courage it took to live authentically in a world that often demanded conformity. Jessica joined me on the couch, her presence a comforting solidity. She didn't have to speak. Her empathetic eyes asked the questions her lips did not. How are you feeling? She finally asked, her voice a soft invitation to share. I took a deep breath, searching for the words that could encapsulate the night's journey. I feel... opened, I started, my voice hesitant but growing stronger with each word. It's like I've been looking through a keyhole and someone just opened the door wide. I saw, felt, and lived things tonight that I had never fully understood before. Jessica nodded, her hand finding mine, giving it a reassuring squeeze. It's a lot to take in, she acknowledged. But you handled it with grace. More than that, you allowed yourself to really see, not just look. Her words resonated deeply. Throughout the evening as Michelle, I had encountered moments of discomfort and disorientation, but each had been a learning point pushing me towards a more profound self-awareness and sensitivity towards others. The superficial and toxic ideologies that I had once leaned on seemed now not just inadequate, but harmful. They were barriers to genuine connections, the very connections I had experienced tonight, which were built on mutual respect and authentic interaction. I've learned something vital tonight, I confessed, the realization dawning on me as I spoke. Being true to oneself isn't just about rejecting what doesn't feel right. It's about embracing what does. It's about honesty, not just with others, but with oneself. Jessica smiled, her eyes reflecting a mix of pride and affection. That's a valuable lesson, she said, one that many never learn. The drive home was contemplative, the city lights blurring past as I mulled over the events of the evening, each moment as Michelle had chipped away at the facade I had built as Michael, revealing not weakness, but a potential for greater strength in vulnerability and empathy. This experience had not only changed my understanding of others, but had fundamentally reshaped how I viewed myself and my place in the world. As I lay in bed later that night, the mask of toxic masculinity that I had once worn so proudly seemed now an ill-fitting relic of a less informed self, the journey of understanding and growth I had embarked on wasn't complete, but the direction was clearer now than ever before. The realization that authenticity and empathy were the truest foundations upon which to build relationships was liberating. With a newfound resolve, I drifted into sleep, not as the Michael who once sought validation through dominance and arrogance, but as a Michael who appreciated the diverse tapestry of human experience and who was eager to explore life's richness with an open heart and an open mind. The transformation from Michael to Michelle and back again had not just altered how I presented myself to the world, 
It had transformed how I related to the world and the people in it. Several weeks had passed since the transformative night where I became Michelle. The lessons I learned were not merely fleeting impressions, they had deeply influenced my approach to life and relationships. I found myself more open, more empathetic, and far more genuine than I had ever been. The toxic ideologies that once clouded my judgment had dissolved, leaving a clarity and purpose I relished. Jessica had been a catalyst for this profound change, her intuition and understanding guiding me through my transformation. It was she who had orchestrated the evening that changed everything, and she who had stood by me, a steadfast presence amid the chaos of self-discovery. Our connection, strengthened by that shared experience, had evolved into something rich with potential and promise. We decided to meet again, this time without any themes or challenges, just two people enjoying each other's company. I suggested a quiet cafe by the riverside, a place where the hustle of the city faded into the background, allowing space for meaningful conversation. As I approached the cafe, I saw Jessica waiting outside, her hair catching the sunlight, a book in hand. The sight of her, so serene and content, filled me with a warmth that seemed to echo through my very core. She looked up, her smile bright and welcoming as I drew near. Michael, she greeted, her voice reflecting a genuine happiness to see me. Beautiful day, isn't it? It's perfect, I replied, feeling an ease and rightness about being there with her. We chose a table by the water, the gentle sounds of the river providing a soothing backdrop to our meeting. As we settled in, our conversation flowed naturally. We talked about everything from books and movies to our dreams and the subtle lessons life had taught us. The pretenses that had once clouded our interactions were gone, stripped away to reveal the earnestness at the heart of our connection. During one quiet moment, as we both took a sip of our coffee, I took the chance to express my gratitude. Jessica, I want to thank you, I began, my tone earnest. That night, being Michelle, it opened my eyes in ways I hadn't expected. It made me realize how much more there is to every person than what we see on the surface. Jessica listened intently, her eyes soft with understanding. I'm glad it did, she responded warmly. Seeing you embrace that experience, watching you grow from it, it was inspiring. It's not every day you meet someone willing to challenge their own perspectives so openly. Our conversation then turned to our futures, discussing not just what we hoped for individually, but what we might explore together. The potential for a deeper relationship was clear its foundation built on the authenticity and respect that had blossomed between us. We talked about taking things slowly, learning about each other in a way that was honest and true, free from the societal masks we had both worn at times. As the afternoon faded into evening, with the sunset painting the sky in hues of gold and pink, it felt as though we were not just closing a chapter, but beginning a new one. This time, however, it was a chapter we were writing together, with open hearts and open minds. Our goodbye that evening was not a farewell, but a promise of more to come. We parted with a hug that held the warmth of genuine affection and the excitement of future possibilities. As I walked away, I felt a sense of completeness, a harmony between who I was and who I wanted to be. The journey that began with doubt and disguise had led me to a place of truth and connection. With Jessica and as myself, I looked forward to exploring the beautiful, complex tapestry of life, enriched by every honest, heartfelt moment we would share.